Hi there, my name is Laura Kokkarnen and in this 5 minute video I will tell you what are SharePoint site designs and site scripts and the basics of what you can do with them, how you can create your own site scripts and deploy them to your tenant and then use them in SharePoint Online. Let's get to it. If you've ever created modern sites using the self-serve site creation view, you've most likely noticed this drop down for communication sites. These are so-called default site designs. In addition to these, you can also create your own custom site designs and with them automatically configure your SharePoint sites with the configurations you define in your site script. Examples of such configurations are the creation of content types and lists, navigation adjustments, setting the site logo and color theme, adjusting regional settings and site permissions, and so forth. Normally, you don't see this drop down for team sites because there's just one default site design, but because I have already deployed one custom site design to my tenant, this drop-down is now visible. Now let's take a look at this custom site design and create a site with it. In addition to simply naming your site design, you can also include a description for it, so the users know what site design does. This one is meant for creating internal project workspaces because it automatically disables external sharing for the site. But in addition to that, it also automatically applies the company branded color theme and creates a Teams team for the underlying Office 360 group. Let's see what happens when we create a site with it. First of all, we need to have a name for it. I want the workspace to be private so only members can see it. And let's create it. I don't want to add any additional members to the project at this time, so let's finish. Here at the top, you will see this status bar and a link to your progress. Let's click it. When it is done, we click this button to see our updated site. As you can see, our custom color theme has been applied to the site. And when we go to teams, we can see that a new team has automatically been created for our project. In addition to using site designs when creating sites, you can also apply them to existing sites either programmatically or via the site designs panel. Here you can see what site designs and site script actions have already been applied to the site. And when you go to available site designs, you can see all site designs that have been deployed to your tenant and execute them to your site here and now. So how can you build your own custom site design that does exactly what I just showed you here? Let me tell you. First of all, open the site script JSON schema documentation. Here, on the right side, you can immediately see what configurations you can do with site scripts. Let's start off by copy-pasting this script base to a JSON file. First, we want to apply a custom color theme that has been deployed to a tenant. So let's go to this apply a theme section and copy this into the actions section. And I have a theme called multicolored theme in my tenant. Then we want to disable external sharing because this is an internal project workspace. So let's go to manage guest access and copy this and separate all these verbs with a comma. By default, it's already disabled, so we don't need to change the value here. And finally, I want to start a flow or a logic app. So let's go to trigger flow section and copy this JSON snippet into actions. And even though this is called trigger flow, you can also trigger logic app with it, which might end up being the preferred choice because of the different pricing model. But regardless of which one you choose, your flow or logic app needs to start with the HTTP trigger and what you need to do is to copy paste the URL from the trigger to your site script. And that's it, our site script is ready and we can proceed to deploying it to our tenant. Here is a PowerShell script I'm going to use for deploying that site script to my tenant and for creating the site design for it. Here at the top I have the configurations. First of all, here's my tenant admin site URL for connecting. Then. Here's the title for my site design and site script. Basically, what name do I want to have in the drop-down menu? Then there's the description that appears under the name in the site design panel. Then I have a directory path to the JSON file that contains my site script. 
And then we have a web template variable. If you want your site design to appear in the team site dropdown, you need to set it to 64. If for communication sites, 68. And for users who are not allowed to create groups, so for creating groupless team sites, you need to set it to 1. And if you don't want it to appear in the create site UI at all, set it to something else, for example 0. This way, the site design can only be applied via the site design panel or programmatically. Then I've also created my own preview image which gets displayed in the site design panel and I've added it to the site assets library on my SharePoint website. After configurations, we connect to our tenant and at this point the script will prompt me for credentials. After successful authentication, it will first get the site script content from the JSON file and after that add it to my tenant. It will return an array object and I'm selecting the first item in it which is the script I've just deployed and I only need to pick the ID property for later. Then I proceed to creating the site design using the configurations I provided above and link the site script I just deployed to the site design using the site scripts property. So to clarify the distinction between a site design and a site script, site script is the JSON markup and site design is the thing you see in the dropdown and which you use for triggering the execution of one or more site scripts that have been linked to it by using the site scripts property. And yes, you guessed it, you can have multiple site scripts in one site design and also have the same site script linked to multiple different site designs. This allows you to build very modular site design solutions for easier maintenance. Now let's run this script. And when we go back to the self-service site creation view, we can see that our site design appears in the dropdown. As I just showed you, you can deploy and under that manage your site designs and site scripts by using PowerShell. Currently, you can add, view, delete and update them, set the permissions, view what site designs and site scripts have been executed for a site and also export an existing list as JSON which you can then immediately include to be a part of your complete site script. In the future, you will also be able to export entire site configurations. If you don't want to use PowerShell, you can do almost all of these same things with REST. This means that you can execute those operations from any platform as long as you are able to make an HTTP request. You can also provision your site designs and site scripts by using a PMP provisioning template and apply them on sites by using Season. After reading the official Microsoft documentation, if you're interested in knowing more, you can also visit my personal blog at laurakokkinen.com where I have a very thorough guide about site designs and also step-by-step -step instructions on how to create the kind of flow that I showed you in the demo. Okay, that's it. I hope you learned a lot about SharePoint site designs and are interested in giving them a go. Otherwise, have fun and I'll see you later. Bye-bye!